This is Psychological Injury, Exploring Racial Trauma, I'm Alex Spearman. When I conducted the interviews for this podcast, America was still grappling with the deaths of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and the shooting of Jacob Blake. Officer Derek Chauvin had been convicted of Floyd's murder. A felony, find the defendant guilty. Since then, there have of course been a number of other incidents which have captured America's attention, including attacks on the Jewish and Asian communities, the shooting at the Topps grocery store in Buffalo, and the police beating death of Tyree Nichols in Memphis. All of these can contribute to racial trauma. And as a black woman, I'm tired. I'm tired. What I found for myself as a journalist covering these incidents, along with existing in the world as a black queer person, is that I had reached a threshold for witnessing, reporting on, and personally enduring racial trauma. In episode one, I told you about having an emotional breakdown while covering George Floyd's funeral. Well, it was not the last one. And during the process of getting mental health treatment, I kept hearing four letters that changed my life. PTSD. Post-traumatic stress disorder is described as a mental health condition that develops following a traumatic event characterized by intrusive thoughts about the incident, recurrent distress, anxiety, flashbacks, and avoidance of similar situations. All things I was experiencing. What I didn't know is that more specifically, I was experiencing PTSD stemming from racial trauma, which is the emotional impact of stress related to racism, racial discrimination, and race-related stressors either from a specific incident ongoing systemic racism, or witnessing those events. And when it came to treatment, there were challenges. Here's part of my conversation with therapist Deborah Cruz. It it wasn't until I actually started looking help for myself and talking to multiple therapists and psychologists, and they're like, we don't know what to do, or like, I had to piece things together. There's no center that you can go to. There's no program that is set up. There's no specialty, you know, by and large, to do these things. I'm so happy that this is being addressed. And I think more of it needs to be addressed. And, um, and the time is right for it. What Cruz and I were referring to is the need for the broader mental health community to recognize that not enough is being done to address and treat racial trauma. When we come back, the hurdles that even therapists are facing to become culturally competent. You're listening to Psychological Injury, Exploring Racial Trauma. I'm Alex Spearman. This is Psychological Injury, Exploring Racial Trauma. I'm Alex Spearman. Now, when it comes to gaining cultural competency, therapist Deborah Cruz tells me that she ran into problems when she was getting her own education and training. I started out in social work, and social work only had one course, social justice, but it doesn't specifically cover race. You know, I was one of the few Black people in my class, so whenever it, when they talked about race, they looked at me like I was a spokesperson for the whole Black race, you know. I switched to counseling because they did cover areas of all types of diversity. You know, that's when I learned that even in the, even in the the educational system for practitioners, it's not there. I had to really hunt and peck to put my whole program together in terms of dealing with helping people to heal, you know, based on the traumas that I've been through and how I had to get back, you know, get on, on a functioning level. From the patient perspective, cultural competency is something Ray Fisher, a black former Marine and IT professional says was necessary in helping him deal with the trauma of discrimination he faced in the workplace. It wasn't easy for him to find it first. Have have you faced challenges with that? Absolutely. And I, and I, and I, um, I have a therapist, um, uh, probably about six years ago. Um, and, and when I got out of Marine Corps, I, I I seeked therapy and I have family members that are psychologists. So I've always had those resources personally, but not, Everyone has the same walk that I do. And how important has that been? Very important. Very important. What, what? They get it. They get it and they break it down to you in a way for you to understand. And and and, and that's what therapy is about. <laughs> you know, getting it so that it resonates with you and you can build on that. And uh not to say that I don't think that somebody that isn't of a different culture couldn't do that for me, but um 
I felt that I had success. And that was the recommendation of my family members as psychologists to say to seek, seek a male of color to uh, help you work through that if you can. Mental Health America reports that in 2019, less than 2% of American Psychological Association members were Black or African American. That disparity is cause for concern for counselors like psychotherapist Janice Evans, who believes that it is a sign that many practitioners are not culturally competent enough to address issues related to racial trauma. As someone who's in the field, do you think overall the field is doing enough to address it? I don't think that we knew how big it was until the last year. I mean, of course it existed. We've had a lot of black men killed over the last several years um, regarding police, uh, by police brutality. But I don't think it came to the height that it did until George Floyd, right? So were we prepared, you know, to have tools or sessions available for to, to hear people's stories? Maybe not. Did, did I have any anything prepared? Or am I just meeting my client where they were when they needed to talk about it? I met them where they were. So the, the short answer is no. I don't think that, that we had we have enough prepared to address the issue of racial trauma. Yeah. Um, and now it's, of course, it's changing. We have more people talking about it, more people setting up storytelling groups. We have more books. We're just beginning to realize what we need to do to arrest, to, to address and arrest the symptoms of um, racial trauma. And Deborah Cruz notes the lack of a broader standard of care when treating racial trauma. It's not it's not cohesive where it, it's it, it lists um, it builds a, a strict guide, a guideline for everybody to understand, you know, like a language. It doesn't have a, it, none of that is, is put together in a, in a particular language so that people can understand what this is, how we deal with it. How we how we move forward, you know, in terms of healing. It's bits and pieces everywhere. Certain schools have different guidelines, you know, government has different guidelines, that type of thing. But there's not a, I call it the architecture of racism and racial trauma to let people know exactly what it is and how it affects them on an individual level. Do you have any thoughts on why that may be? I don't, I, why that might be, touchy subject maybe, touchy subject, people just don't want to go there, and um, then it continues, so it never gets solved, it never gets resolved, you know, um, and like I say that, you know, people just don't know, don't have that language without getting their feelings hurt or feeling that they're blamed for doing, for doing something or being a part of a group who's done something, you know? Yeah, so, so to me, it's just, it, it's, it all goes back to that on the micro level, how individual people feel about it, how they think about it, how they think about it, how they process their thoughts about racism and victimization. There are some encouraging signs, however. Census data shows that the number of Black people in the psychology workforce grew from 4.4% to just over 5% between 2011 and 2021. And the American Psychological Association offers a number of continuing education courses for therapists and counselors on a number of topics surrounding race, culture and identity, and specifically racial trauma. Asked Cruz and Evans about the benefit of cultural competency to practitioners and patients outside of minority communities. Both Cruz and Evans are both Black women in the field. What, what's kind of your view on like what could be or should be needing to be done to help address this on a broader scale and not just within our own individual communities? I think that people who are not familiar um, with the Black experience need to hear more stories of the Black experience um, to give it validity, um, to understand what that trauma is, how deep it goes, uh, in order to be able to sit with and help a person if that person is coming to you for therapy and you're both from two different cultures. You have to understand the stories first. 
So I think there needs to be more opportunities um, on a bigger platform uh, for African Americans to tell their stories and for non people of color to hear those stories. I think it does cross racial and cultural lines because it's a human condition and it's, it's something that's systemic. And I also I always believe that racial trauma is in our DNA, people of color. I think from the slave ships, I think it's just a systemic in our DNA that's built. And as generations come, it's like a generational curse that we pick up, you know, I'm older now and it's so disheartening for me to see what's happening now that happened when I was a kid, you know, having to sit up the, all the racism that I went through, you know, being bust, that type of thing. And it, it just continues. It just continues because I don't think there's that, that universal system of people to look at this without feeling judged, without feeling blamed, but, you know, to look at it as an issue that's a maladaptive condition against human beings. So now we've broken down trauma, PTSD, racial trauma, and how it can show up in people's lives. And we also heard the concern among those in the therapy field about what is and is not being done to treat people for racial trauma. But I didn't want to leave this series without a bit of hope. So in our final episode, I'm going to introduce you to the author of the book that put me on the path to wellness. We are so conditioned to think that we are defective, right? That is not episodic, that's structural. <laughs> You're listening to Psychological Injury, Exploring Racial Trauma. I'm Alex Spearman. <laughs>